Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shivar Tankamani, an Integration Technical Architect. In my last video, I explained how to include Spring module in Mule 4 project. And uh, I was also uh, assuring that uh, I will be explaining the advantages of Spring module uh, in Mule 4 in uh, later videos. So I decided to put uh, one another video that explains advantages of using Spring module in Mule 4 projects. So uh, I'm going to explain uh, how to use connection pooling in Mule 4 using Spring. This video assumes uh, that you already know how to include uh, Spring module in Mule 4. So those of you uh, uh, who have not done a Spring module implementation in Mule 4, please check out my previous video. I will put the link in the description below. You can just go through those video first. So in this video, uh, I'll be explaining uh, the way and technique to use connection pooling using Spring module in four different steps. So first, let's see how to add Spring module quickly. And uh, also you can go through my previous video. And step number two, we need to add a Spring XML configuration where we need to define and configure connection pooling. And that's the third step. I'll be going through the properties uh, uh, and meaning for this connection pooling. The fourth one is to use uh, uh, connection pooling for our database operations. Let's get started. So let's recollect uh, how to add a Spring module uh, into Mule 4 project. So as I explained, uh, you can uh, simply type uh, Spring and you can drag and drop this authorization filter. So we are not going to see how to add uh, or use authorization filter, but uh, Dragging and dropping this authorization filter will introduce all the Spring dependencies in uh, Mule 4 project. So we have already done that uh, in my previous video. I explained them all. So let's check out what the POM file is. So in the POM file, uh, as soon as we drag and drop uh, uh, a Spring related component, uh, you will see all the shared libraries included. And also you can see the corresponding uh, dependent jar files also added for our use. So we are ready to use uh, Spring and uh, we have also seen uh, how to add uh, uh, beans.xml uh, which you can uh, copy paste from uh, MuleSoft website. So where um, this is a, a Spring XML configuration. So let's go to beans.xml which is a uh, uh, spring related XML which we have added uh, in the Mule 4 file and uh, this is our uh, point of focus. So uh, there are so many uh, different implementations uh, available for connection pooling. Even you can implement your own connection pooling with the help of uh, uh, the standard JDBC connections. So it's all the method of uh, having the pool of connections uh, uh, readily available for reuse. So you can implement on your own. But uh, uh, in this video, we are going to see how uh, the standard implementations are done and we are going to use one of those. So let's go back and see uh, what are the different uh, uh, implementations available. So there is one standard uh, Apache Commons database connection pooling which you can use. And uh, C3P0 uh, is connection pooling which is uh, developed by Steve Waldman which you can use which is also popular. And we are going to use the most popular one, uh, which is Hikari CP. So this is known uh, uh, and uh, used by many uh, projects, uh, which is known for its standard uh, and stability. So uh, we are going to uh, use Hikari CP and uh, related dependency to be added in our uh, project. So let's see how to add this before we uh, start looking into this connection pooling. Let's go back and take a look at the POM file. And uh, I have added uh, two dependencies, one for MySQL, where we are going to use this database, uh, uh, MySQL database. And the other dependency added is uh, Hikari CP. So you can see this uh, dependency in the Hikari CP site. You can copy and use whichever the version you are interested based on the features added. So we have used uh, standard uh, version which is 3.1.0 and uh, let's see uh, the configurations uh, to be done. So you need to define the uh, data source uh, which is implemented by uh, Hikari CP data source. 
um, you can note down this is the package and the class name and uh, maybe I'll put this uh, bean configurations in the description below so that you can copy and paste uh, without the need of doing research on your own so uh, there are several properties uh, that are used and uh, the, it's all standard the driver class name is uh, a mysql related driver and it's a standard jdbc url which contains uh, um, a server name port and the database name which i have given here i'm using my own uh, mysql db which is installed in my local machine and I have the database called the employee, which I'm going to use in my mule flow. So the username and password, you can you have to specify. And you have to specify the connection pool name. Um, this is required because you may implement uh, different connection pooling with uh, uh, different size for different purposes. And also uh, you may include two or more uh, databases, uh, for example, one connection pooling may be for MySQL, another connection pooling may be for uh, Microsoft SQL uh, server. So uh, it's important to give the uh, pool name to differentiate between each other. And uh, here is the maximum pool size, which defines the number of connections uh, that will be active at the moment. And uh, its standard is to give uh, uh, eight uh, pool size. Because you don't want to give 50 or 100, it, which will be an overhead or it's an overkill uh, for the server to maintain all 50 connections at a time. And at the same time, you don't need to specify one or two, which is again, um, if you are attempting two or more connections at the same time, it has to uh, create the new one and, and uh, it's a waste of energy. So, uh, you can choose ideal connection pool size which is an 8. So connection timeout is uh, uh, normally we have given uh, as uh, 10 seconds. So upon attempting which if the connection is not uh, uh, attempted, it will time out and then create a new connection. So that's it. It's a very simple uh, configuration. The, the most important one is to decide uh, uh, maximum pool size and the connection timeout. So our final step is to use the connection pooling for our uh, database operations, which I have added here. So uh, I have introduced a simple HTTP listener uh, on the resource path slash insert, where uh, uh, we are going to attempt uh, to insert uh, some simple insert statement. So I'm going to insert uh, uh, player's ID and name into the player's table. And I have the uh, I have my database here and I can run it now. So this is my uh, database table called the players. So this is where we are going to introduce uh, cricket players name and uh, ID. Let's go back. And uh, I am trying attempting I have already added uh, multiple times while while I tried this uh, project beforehand. But uh, it's it's no problem to insert again and again. It's just a demonstration purpose. So uh, let's see let's see the configuration. So here, this component doesn't have uh, uh, anything that relates to the connection pooling, but uh, um, only the connection configuration indicates the data source which is taken from the connection pooling. Let's see how it works. So uh, we have uh, the data data source reference, and in this database configuration, we are not going to def define or uh, decide anything related to the database. We are going to uh, simply give data, phase, uh, data source reference as employee data source. So this employee data source should be the, uh, having the exact name uh, as we defined in the connection pooling. So that's it. Uh, so nothing else to do. So uh, let's try to see and uh, run this. Let's take a look at the console. The application is uh, up and running already and we can investigate the log to see if the connection pooling uh, is created already or not. Yeah, you can see here there is a Hikari data source MySQL connection pool start completed. So everything is set, configured, up and running and connection pool is created. 
So now we are ready to do the database operations. So now uh, let's see uh, what is the resource path. It's insert. So let's go back. So I have already uh, done that uh, by giving this resource path insert in port number 8081. So let's refresh this. So again, we got the message saying that data inserted successfully. Let's go back. So only after the data insert, uh, you can see here the transformation message coming out uh, successfully. So let's investigate whether this data is inserted or not. So already there are uh, two records that say such in. Let's run again. So now you can see the third one inserted uh, just now. So that's it uh, in this video. Hope uh, you find this video useful and maybe probably you can start using uh, connection pooling in your project. If you are at the architect level or lead level, you can suggest uh, uh, to use this connection pooling in your project. Uh, so this can handle efficiently and this can improve uh, the performance uh, a lot, particularly when there are uh, so many transactions happening uh, in a minute. Uh, so you can uh, very well save a lot of uh, errors. You can prevent a lot of errors and you can uh, run the project more efficiently by using this connection pooling. So hope you liked this video and if you liked it, uh, please uh, click the like button and uh, subscribe my, for my channel. So it will encourage me to do more useful videos. So see you in at another good video. Bye.